walk in the middle path walk in the middle path is about kind of the balance and the harmony and in order to do that we have to accept reality as it is but also work to change it we have to validate ourselves and others we have to point out errors we have to combine work with rest and find that right balance between the two so people kind of use the example of tightening and loosening strings on a violin sometimes you need to tighten them sometimes you need to loosen them and you're always looking for that balance and it's forever changing it involves moving away from extreme emotions extreme actions and extreme thinking so we're talking kind of real ends of spectrums here and, and we want to move away from that and think about developing a balanced response so rather than that, than that kind of ebb and flow we're looking for the calm um, in the middle so it's both sides it's this and it's that so all things are connected and in a state of change and it's about balancing the extremes of those things so there are four main overarching ideas in the dialectical perspective the first one being that the universe is filled with opposing sides and opposing forces. You know, you've got light and dark, you've got night and day, up, down, you've got something or nothing. You've always got these kind of opposing, pulling forces. Um, if it's not one thing, it's the other. And it holds things together and it creates constant change. You know, every single day is a constant change. And dialectics tells us that opposing points of view can both be true. So when we consider opposing points of view, we can find a synthesis of both perspectives. So it helps us to become unstuck and it facilitates change. Everything and every person is connected in some way. So we're all connected to each other physically. You know, the air we we are breathing in the same room as someone that person's just breathed it out <laughs> that you know we're all breathing in the same air and um, the i've got my feet on the floor and you you're standing on the same floor right next to me you know we're all connected each of us also has parts and each of us is part of a, a bigger a whole a, a greater whole so you know we've got arms we've got legs we've got um atoms cells whatever it is those are that, our little parts, and but we're also part of something bigger, something bigger than ourselves. So that's family, friendship groups, um, part of an area that you live, a, a culture, a workplace, whatever it is, you're part of something else. Whether it's you know a system, part of a, a service, anything. So separation, we describe it as a bit of an illusion, really, and actually the universe is one, and it's it's a whole. Change is the only constant and dialectics help us to radically accept that, that change continually happens whether we like it or not. It helps us to become more flexible and to just to learn how to go with the flow more because we can't stop it. It's like trying to, you know, stop the tide or stop time. It's just impossible and fighting it all the time causes a lot of distress. So dialectics help us to just kind of go with that flow and move with that change because it's happening whether you want it to or not so this is one of my favorites john lennon's quote is life is what happens while you're busy making other plans you know you can plan your life out to the nth degree but it ain't gonna always work like that and things come in things change it things turn it upside down coronavirus before you know it you know like the whole the whole country's doing something different and you've just got to go with it because you can't change it so some more examples of that is that we're we're older now than we were a second ago and our bodies are constantly changing based on what you eat what you do um so skin cells are falling off and then new ones grow and um, so skin you know degenerates skin repairs it's always changing our teeth are always moving. I don't know if you know this, but as you get older, your teeth are always 
very, 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 very slightly moving forward. So you could look at a picture of your, your teeth as you are as a, you know, in your 20s and they will not be the same kind of looking set of teeth as you are in your 50s because they, they move ever so slightly. Our ears continuously grow, our nose continuously grows. Um, our brains change with new experiences. So, you know, something could happen to me in a couple of years time and I, and I won't react in the same way because my experiences and things I've learned and things I've done have changed who I am and how I process things and the thoughts and feelings that I have related to that. So I'm constantly experiencing things in a different way. And meaning and truth also evolve with time. You know, um, what was true at one point isn't now. What was a law at one point isn't now. Culture, society, things are always moving and always changing. So no man ever steps in the same river twice, for he's not the same river and he's not the same man. Change is transactional as well, so dialectics help us to analyse how we are being influenced by our environment and how we are influencing our environment. Um, it leads us to understanding, a greater sense of understanding rather than blame. So each individual influences his or her environment just as much as the environment influences the individual. So it's a a reciprocal process it's kind of one influences the other continuously so how how do we do this how do we kind of develop a more dialectical way of thinking and how do we develop this sense of walking the middle path and this balance well we can ask our wise mind you know what am i missing right now what am i missing in this scenario this situation um you can ask, where's where's the kernel of truth in the other side? So if that you're in a, um, a discussion or an argument, whatever it is, try and think about that other perspective. So it's it's this and it's this. So an example is you are tough and you are gentle. We can be both of those things. So we want to move away from this extreme use of language and seeing things as being black or white or this or that, it can be both. It can be this and this. Because it makes it harder to receive new information and ch change over time if you're stuck and rigid in one extreme position and you're not willing to see something from any other perspective, any other side, any other point of view. So... We balance opposites, so validating yourself as well as other people, accepting reality, but also working to change it. You know, these are kind of opposites and we can hold the two at the same time. So, for example, if, if there was a cup in the middle of the table and one person on one side was describing what they saw in, of the cup and they were saying, you know, it's got a smooth side, um, it's this colour, it's it's that, it's, it's got a pattern or it hasn't. And then the other person is describing the, their point of view on their side. Well, it's got a bit sticking out of it with a hole in. Now, unless that other person on the other side is willing to let go of the of their point of view to an extent where they can come all the way around to the other person's side, they're going to not allow themselves to be able to see that actually their perspective is different and what they're seeing is different you know so it can have a smooth side and it can have um a bit sticking out of it with a hole in it that we know as being a handle so allowing yourself that flexibility to move and to to almost drop the rope on your point of view and your perspective to really come around and see something from somebody else's point of view it can let you see both sides and, and a, a whole picture, you know, as opposed to kind of just a real narrow perspective. We can practice dialectics by, you know, making lemonade out of lemons. Whatever happens, we can, we can take something from it and we can develop and we can learn. So 
suffering can enhance our empathy and it can allow us to understand other people that are suffering. So it's, an, it's an opportunity. Um, and this makes me think of George Floyd and the things that have happened to him and actually that kind of the impact that that has had and the the continuous impact it's going to have. Um, and if you haven't seen it, please Google. There's a video of his little six-year-old little girl on somebody's shoulders and they say to the little girl, what has daddy done? And she says, daddy changed the world. And it just breaks my heart. But that is making lemonade out of lemons. She's like, this, you know, something good has to come of this. Um, so see problems as opportunities to practice our skills. You know, without problems, we'd be scuppered because we wouldn't have any opportunities to put things into action and into practice. Embrace confusion as well. You know, it's okay not to know because then you, you've got a more inquisitive mind and you want to find out. Um, so things are, things are not just true and not true. They're not just yes and no. Learn to sit in the middle. Learn to sit in that kind of uncomfortable paradox of just not knowing that's fine that just makes us more curious play devil's advocate you know okay so if I was that other person what what might I be thinking what might I be doing and why would I want to say that and do that and what might their beliefs be so you could you can do a bit of an empty chair technique where you literally physically get out of one chair and go and sit in another and try to argue the point the opposite point of what you what you're thinking to try and give you that perspective of that other person um, use metaphors and storytelling this is just my favorite thing to do you know and my favorite one is you know don't go to mcdonald's and start kicking off because you you want a pizza when all this sally's burgers you know i just love a metaphor and i could just go on about them all day um you know fix the roof when it's sunny you don't fix it when it's lashing down with rain. Work on yourself and practice these skills when it's not a catastrophic moment. As you know, because then you can develop them and you can get rehearsed in them. So I use, I use a good metaphor and I love a good metaphor. Be aware that you're connected. So treat others as you wish them to treat you. So be, be mindful that if you're going to be harsh, critical and invalidating, then you're probably likely going to get that same response back so if that's not what how you want to be treated then have a real good think about what you're putting out there look for similarities among people instead of differences um so you know that just helps you to feel more connected with people notice the physical connections among all things you can embrace change because we've talked about it it's happening anyway, it's coming, so you might as well just throw yourself into it. You might as well just go with it. You know, you can't stop the weather, so just put a different coat on and go outside. So throw yourself into it and radically accept change. Practice getting used to change as well. There might be things that you do kind of on a regular basis or you've got a set routine. You might have the um, same breakfast every day. Practice having something different. Practice what it feels like to tolerate change and, and something that's not your usual um, to, to help you get used to it. Remember that change is transactional and that everything affects everything else. So what you can be mindful of is, you know, how people impact upon yourself and how you impact upon them and how things that people do change you and how things that you do changes them um so there's that kind of transaction going on continuously so that helps us to be more mindful about what you're putting out there and what you hope and wish to put out there to the world so you might have heard the butterfly effect um you know where people say like the flap of a butterfly's wings can can cause changes you know far and wide so everything affects everything and also practice letting go of blame because that doesn't fit with the dialectical approach. It's very polarising and it's very extreme. You know, it's that person or it's that person. Actually, it doesn't fit with being more dialectical. 